Good afternoon and welcome to my occasional series about the recorder in the 20th century. Now then, I'm doing a quick one here because I want to talk about this extraordinary tenor recorder which I've had back for repair. Um, it's an amazing thing, I've never seen anything like it before. And it's made out of cocobolo wood and the edge which I've now repaired had been cut back to quite a big extent so I've replaced the labium which was not an easy job, but never mind, it was fun doing it. Now, this is a very interesting recorder. It's marked Hewler Orpheus Block Flirter, and it's stamped D. And it is, in fact, a tenor in D. Now, why on earth is there a tenor in D from the 20th century? I thought we only got excited about tenors in D when everyone discovered voice flutes. And, in fact, I've been making 440 tenors in D, um, here's one here, and 415 tenors in D as well. So this is a tenor in D, and on the marvellous recorder homepage, we find that it was marketed in 1925 and 1926. Now, at that time, recorders were made in all sorts of pictures, A, D, E, F, C, everything you like. And in fact, we have, we have the famous Hindemith Trio, to prove that no one really knew what on earth was going on um, because the original of that is written <coughs> for very strange keys indeed. So here we have a tenor recorder in D and just having looked at it you can see that the fingering is a bit odd. It's very German fingered. This hole is very small, this hole is very large and in fact I had a look at Robert Ehrlich's wonderful essay which has just come out and he says that Peter Harlan, who was one of the main movers in the 20s and 30s behind the recorder and the rediscovery of the recorder, invented German fingering. Now, he apparently claimed later that it was a mistake, but nevertheless, German fingering became uniform right throughout Germany. Now, the thing about German fingering, as you know, those of you who have inadvertently bought a German fingered recorder, never mind, um, it goes easily from top to bottom with single finger spacing. No awkward cross fingerings. Very nice, you think, except, of course, those of you who have had a recorder with German fingering will know that once you try and play above this note, Not very happy with that one and if you try and play the flattened version of this it doesn't work at all now if you'll excuse me i'm just going to try and work out uh d e f sharp g a that's right i could always get that confused this is an a not a g as it would be on a c tenor so the a and the B natural works, but the B flat or A sharp doesn't work at all because this hole here is far too small. And looking once again at Robert Ehrlich's wonderful essay, although the recorder was adopted by the National Socialists because it was an organic instrument, that did not lead to and decadent Jewish music like Mendelssohn and Mahler. Um, nevertheless, unfortunately and embarrassingly, it was fully chromatic. So if you really wanted to play a theme from Mahler's Fifth Symphony, you could. And one of the byproducts of German fingering, according to the essay, is that it removed the chromaticism of the recorder. It sabotaged it quite deliberately. Now, why not? That is the conspiracy theory of today anyway. So we have here, this is a 440 voice flute in D. Same key. Fantastic. Except, of course, this doesn't have... German fingering. This has a large hole here. 
and therefore and you also notice that this does not play the high notes and there'll be something in the ball that militates against that but probably the German thing doesn't help just play that again just to remind you very flat non-existent next one this doesn't happen so very interesting tenor recorder stamp D stamped as I said Hula Orpheus Blockflirter marketed between 1925 and 1926 um, another interesting thing that I'll just point out, once again from Robert Ehrlich's wonderful essay, which I encourage you to all get from David Lasocki's website, is that apparently in 1937 a missive went out from the Third Reich to the Hitler Youth saying that from now on only the C and F tuning was to be used throughout the Reich. And now we are all indeed in C and F tuning. So isn't it strange where history finds us? Thank you very much for watching.